Okay, now let's kind of talk formulas a bit. And so this formula I want to give you, and by the way, this is a formula you will get on the test, sort of, and we'll talk about that in class. It's kind of provided to you on the AP exam, um, and you, kind of, you have to kind of piece it together a little bit, but basically you get it. This is a confidence interval for some unknown mu, if you don't know the mean. And this is a statistic, plus or minus, this whole thing is the margin of error. You'll recognize this part is the standard deviation of x bar, or the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. This z star here, the x can sound like the exponent is an asterisk, is a term we use for the number of standard deviations away you are. You saw that this actually was 2 before because we were talking about 95%. In a future example, I'll kind of talk to you about how to calculate z star. Um, but basically, this means how many standard deviations would you have to be away to kind of get as confident as you want it to be. Um, along with these every confidence interval problem, there's three conditions you have to check. And actually, you got kind of used to checking those conditions back in Chapter 9. I kind of made you write a sentence proving it was normal. This is kind of the same idea. And there's three conditions, and we're just going to gloss over them quickly. These conditions are going to be the same really for all of inference. So it'll be kind of these general guidelines are important for Chapter 10, Chapters 11, Chapter 12, with some minor variations. The first thing is you have to be convinced that your sample is actually a simple random sample. Because these whole formulas rely on the fact that you took your sample without any bias. Um, so if it's not a simple random sample, any kind of mathematical formula is not going to adjust for the fact that actually the sample you took was bad to begin with. The second thing is your sampling distribution must be normal. And back from Chapter 9, we learned for means, this could be the central limit theorem or the population could be normal for proportions, this could be uh, NP is greater than 10, NQ is greater than 10, and yeah. And, and then for independence, we talked about this a little bit with proportions. This is the idea that actually all the observations in your sample are independent. Um, sometimes this is kind of why we write uh, the population must be 10 times the sample size. But when we'll talk about this all more in detail in future slides, but I just wanted you to see that a, this is the formula we're going to use for confidence intervals, and there's kind of three sentences that go along with it, and these are kind of in general the three things we're going to write. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about how do we find z star. Before I was talking about that number was 2. That would always be the case. And so I want to just go through a quick example of how to calculate z star using your calculator. Well, let's say the question says you want to be 95% confident. So this big capital C often means your confidence level. We want to be 95% confident. How would you find z star? Well, what that means is how many standard deviations away would you be if you wanted to have be 95% confident in the middle. Well, if you think about that, we would expect this to be about 2, right? Because isn't that exactly what the 68, 95, 99.7 rule said? Well, it turns out that 2 is an approximation. It is really close to 2, but it's actually, to be more precise, it's not exactly 2. If you have 95% in the middle, then wouldn't you have 2.5% on each tail? And then what we think about is, well, let's figure out what's the z-score that corresponds to this number right here, right? Well, that would be, you go from the left, and so wouldn't this number be 95 plus 2.5, which would be inverse norm of 0.975. Now, where did the 97 come from? It came from 2.5 plus 0.95, and that's going to get us a z-score of about 1.956, roughly. And this is actually the specific z-star value you'll use whenever you are... Uh, want to be 95% confident. Now, just one other thing I want to show you is why did I pick this one? Oh, excuse me. Why did I pick this one rather than this one over here? Some students prefer to actually say, okay, well, I'm going to do inverse norm of 0.025, which is going to here. That would be a negative number, and it turned out if you did it that way, you would just get negative 1.95. Because there's a plus or minus, it kind of makes more sense for us to think about the z score being the positive number over here. So I'm always going to choose that number. But if you want to do it the other way and then just make it positive, that will work too. Okay, Let's think about what if the question says you want to be 90% confident. Well, then we have 90% in the middle. We have 5% on each tail. So if you want to figure out what z-score is this over here, it's the area from the left. That would be 5 plus 90 is 0.95 over here, 0.95. And that gets us a z-score about 1.64. Um, another common level is you want to be 99% confident. Well, here you've got 99% in the middle, 0.5%, 0.5%. Again, you want to calculate, where's my pen? Here it is. You want to calculate this over here from the left. 
that's going to be 0.995, and that gets us a z-score over here. Okay? These are probably the three most common z-star values, but it's that idea of area from the left. You had to, if you had to do one of the, another number besides these three now, you could do it. Just one last big idea before we do some examples. Our book talks about something called the inference toolbox, which is kind of an algorithm or recipe or step-by-step -step process for doing any problem involving inference, which is what we're doing now, all these confidence interval problems. You'll see the notation in your book, do this problem and follow the inference toolbox. And all that means is follow these four steps. So let's just run through these steps pretty quickly. Um, the first step is you state, the, we say parameter conditions, calculations, interpret. So state the unknown parameter, which will, for these examples was always mu. Check your conditions, there's three sentences usually there. Do the calculations, we uh, showed you that formula. And then interpret your results means write that sentence, often beginning with I am 95% confident. Um, these four steps, parameter, conditions, calculations, interpret, you're going to see day after day for the next several months with some minor variations as the problems get a little bit more complicated. Okay, so now that I've hopefully laid kind of a big foundation, I want to run through a specific example in a lot of detail. Okay, so here you take a simple random sample of 80 people and you ask them about how long their commute is. Turns out X bar, which is the specific value for these sample of 80 people, is about 14.5 minutes. That takes about 14.5 minutes to get to work. That's the X bar for the 80 people in this sample. Okay? And let's say for some inexplicable reason you know that sigma is 7 minutes. We'll come back to and we'll talk about it a little bit later. But let's say you know that. Okay, the question would be find a 95% confidence interval, confidence interval there, for the unknown population mean commute time. So that symbol we're looking for is mu. Mu is the population commute time. We don't know that. We know for these 80 people that x bar is 14.5, but really what we care about is for the entire po population. We have no way of knowing that. So here, mu is what we don't know. We do know that so the x bar is 14.5. We know sigma is 7. For some reason we knew that, and we'll talk about that in a little bit in the next couple sections. N is 80, that's our sample size, and big capital C, that's our confidence level. Now, where did that come from? The question told us that's what we want it to be. Okay? Okay, so running through the inference toolbox now, which is those first steps, remember the first thing was parameter. What is the unknown parameter? We, mu is the unknown parameter, which will often be, although it, it's going to change throughout the remainder of the year, but for right now it'll often be mu. It's the population mean commute time, for the, again, for the entire population. It's unknown. We really don't know what that is. And the process we're actually doing, which, just so you know for the future, it's called the confidence interval for an unknown population mean. We'll sometimes call this a Z interval, the Z coming from Z scores, because it has to do with Z scores. Now let's run through and check our conditions. This is the second step in the inference toolbox. Well, is it a simple random sample? Yes, it actually said that in the problem. So just we can just write SRS check if it says that in the problem. Okay, Is the sampling distribution normal? Well, yes. Think back to chapter 8, or chapter 9, excuse me. Since n is 80, and 80 is bigger than 30, the sampling distribution of x bar is normal because of the central limit theorem. Almost exactly what we wrote in the previous chapter. Kind of a new thing with independence. Okay, Are commute times independent? Well, what if... The first person had a short commute time. Might that change the other ones? Well, we don't care about that because, again, this is this idea the population is 10 times the sample size. Back in Chapter 9, I only made you do that for proportions. Now we're also going to make this check for means. Okay. So again, second step of the inference toolbox, conditions. We have three things to check, SRS, normal, independence, often three sentences. In this case, one of the sentences was really easy. Okay. Step three of the inference toolbox is your calculations. Here's the formula. Okay, which we talked about before, statistic plus or minus margin of error, or statistic x bar plus or minus the z star value. This is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. We have all these things. x bar is 14.5. z star, 1.959. I, I got this by doing inverse norm of 0.975. Okay, it's a number you'll eventually kind of just remember, uh, although I can do it inverse norm of 0.975 which came from the fact that our confidence level was 95. Sigma over root n. I know sigma, I know root n. I multiplied these whole things together, and then I get the whole entire margin of error is about 1.533. Then if I have 14.5 plus or minus 1.533, 
that gets me the, the confidence interval. The, th this is actually the confidence interval. Okay? Um, this is in many ways kind of the answer to the question. And then the, really the fourth step of the inference toolbox, remember, was interpret. And this is a sentence you have to be able to write. I'm 95% confident, again, don't use the word chance, that the unknown mean commute time is between 12.966 minutes and 16.03 minutes. This sentence really is probably the most important thing. This sentence is in many ways the answer to any kind of confidence interval question. So again, I went through the whole inference toolbox, right? Parameter was step one, conditions was step two, calculations was step three, and this interpret was step four. Just want to show you this, we'll do it in class, but actually this whole problem can be done on the calculator, okay? If you go to the stat menu under tests, there's a bunch of tests there which are going to be a bunch of confidence intervals and uh, hypothesis tests. The specific one I just showed you was number seven, which is something called a Z interval, okay? It asks you for some values. And notice I typed in sigma seven, X bar is 14.5, N is 80, confidence level is 0.95. That's basically the yummers I wrote in yellow a couple slides ago. This button kind of got grayed out, but it says compute or it says calculate, and you just do that, and hey, look, you get these exact numbers. The calculator basically can do all this math for you. So that formula, you have to kind of show knowledge of the formula, and then you just let the calculator just crank out the math. 